Welcome to Psychology of Mental Illness. I'm your host, Daryl Leary. Today's episode will explore a very rare form of mental illness aptly named the push-up, originally referred to as the I've fallen and I can't get off the ground syndrome. Let's first play a clip. What you just saw was Medi Alert's 1980 commercial made famous by the plea for help by a troubled senior. I've fallen and I can't get up. However, a newly diagnosed mental illness recently added to the DMV-4 by American psychiatrist reveals that even the young can suffer the same perceived agonies of being seemingly glued to the ground. Meet Charles Servizio. Charles was born in a small town in Massachusetts, USA, back in 1950, September 5th. His life seemed normal by most standards. He married in 73, became a father of two beautiful children. On the outside, Charles seemed Charles' life seemed to be that of a white picket fence American. He was a celebrated teacher for at-risk teens for 25 years, teaching at the San Bernardino County of Schools. What you are about to see is disturbing footage indeed. It was not his first episode. The day is 1993, March 29th. Charles started off his day like any other, until he climbed to top a platform being reserved at the Fontana City Heights City Hall and collapsed. Upon collapsing onto the ground, he pushed himself up and got off the ground, but suddenly collapsed again, and once again pushed himself up only to collapse. The cycle continues 50 times a minute and goes on for nearly 21 hours. Each time, Charles simply fails to get off the ground completely and onto his feet. In this video, you can clearly see Charles on his knees bent over with his head hung in shame of simply not being able to get onto his feet. So what exactly is happening? Today, we believe this behavior may be a deficit in the neurological feedback response. In this case, Charles has forgotten that he has already pushed himself off the ground and collapses. In a normal functioning brain, we have a working memory a short-term memory, and a long-term memory. When we are performing a task, our working memory operates in the moment. As we slowly complete the task, our past actions achieved become recorded in our short-term memory, so we may progress and not repeat the task at hand. However, in Charles' brain, the information of him pushing himself up and off the ground never becomes imprinted in the short-term memory. Charles simply forgets he has pushed himself up and collapses onto the ground once again. We estimate that 1 in 10,000 suffer from what is now known as the push-up syndrome, and in Charles's case, episodes can last from 2 hours and on. Stranger still is a delusional symptomology that follows an episode as shared by others of the same condition. Charles, like others, believes the Guinness Beer Company, founded in the UK, actually publishes an annual book of world records featuring push-ups as a noteworthy record. World record. Despite it being well known that real-life world records are documented by the Olympics every four years, we do not know why Charles, a non-drinker, would associate a beer company to world records or why this seems to be a prevalent mass delusions of sufferers. Another very common symptom of these push-up sufferers is the nonsensical claims made upon their behalf and the pride they associate with their episodes. Common claims of repeated failure to get oneself off the ground include, it's good exercise and it's great for strength and stamina. And unlike normal individuals who would most likely suffer a mild form of social awkwardness, from falling down, and more so for failing to get back onto their feet, sufferers seem proud of their repeated failed attempts, commonly boasting how many times they've tried to get off the ground in time spans ranging from 1 minute, 1 hour, and 24 hours. Here's a picture of Charles encouraging another sufferer to not give up in hope of getting off the ground. Keep pushing, Daryl, the sign reads. Science does not always have answers, but tomorrow's doctors may bring us hope, and maybe one day a cure. Thank you for your time. I'm your host, Dr. Daryl Leary.